Is Fortnite Primal overhated? This is something that I have been talking about on the channel for so long. I legitimately enjoyed Fortnite Primal, and it's really cool to see another YouTuber talking about how much I like Fortnite Primal. Well, I haven't watched a video yet, so I'm assuming they're going to talk about how much I like Primal. An absolute W member of our community and Ronamug suggested this video to me, and I honestly cannot wait to watch it. Guys, this video is by Jackus Creates or Jacus Creates. I apologize. I don't mean to be disrespectful for saying the name wrong. I'm just not familiar with the YouTuber myself, but hey. Maybe we have a really cool new YouTuber to watch, guys. Let's get into this video in just a second. Before we do, though, I do want to say hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with many YouTube channels. Let's watch this video. Hey, squad. Jack is here. And you know what I love? Mediocrity. <laughs> Whoa -ho -ho. Ask a Fortnite fan what their least favorite season is. Go on, ask him. There's a decent chance they'll tell you vibing or wilds, but I think there's one word that will come into the conversation more than any other. This is entirely true. Like, wild, wilds up there too, and that's a conversation for another time, but I legitimately really loved Fortnite Wilds as well. I, I to be fair, I liked every Fortnite season, but still, this one, there has been no hated season like there has been with Primal. Primal. Primal was the sixth season of Chapter 2, launching in 2021 and running for about three months, and most people hated it. But me? No, I like being different, so I'm gonna make my case for why Fortnite Primal is actually overheated. Let's go. The main thing people talk about when they criticize Primal is the loot pool, the underpowered makeshift weapons, and the- This I will agree with, though I absolutely hated the makeshift weapons. I don't know if there's anybody who actually did like the makeshift weapons, with the exception of maybe- just maybe because of the headshot, the makeshift bow. But other than that, all of these makeshift weapons were bad. And what sucked about it was it was necessary to craft them. Because if you had a makeshift weapon, you were dying unless the opponent also had a makeshift weapon. I, I hated that as well. The overpowered primal weapons. I do think that some of the makeshift weapons were pretty underwhelming. Particularly the rifle. It was pretty bad. <laughs> to, to be honest though, it's more than underwhelming. Like that weapon, those weapons sucked. Other the SMG, for example, was a slightly better tactical SMG and people love the TAC SMG. Overall, a pretty mixed bag and I will concede that their high availability definitely damaged the season. Yes. Now on the other hand, the primal shotgun was certainly a pretty big issue on launch, <laughs> but Epic did make multiple attempts to reduce its power. And this is also far from the only time we've had this issue with the loot pool. But Epic Games doesn't listen. Epic Games doesn't care about the game, they just want to spray meta, they don't ever fix anything. Look at Chapter 3 Season 2, for example. The drum shotgun was the exact same, and yet people praised that season for some reason. But to be fair, people also really, really criticized the drum shotgun meta. People really hated the MK Assault Rifle that season. There were huge complaints about that season. People are just remembering the good things as they usually do. I will say I loved it throughout. I like the primal shotgun. I like the drum shotgun. Doesn't matter to me. I'm here. I'm happy to play. It also wasn't particularly hard to get mechanical weapons. You could just find bunker chests across the map, which guaranteed high tier classic loot. Now, the loot pool definitely had some filler items like the Spire Jump Boots, Cuddlefish, <laughs> and <laughs> the Recycler. I love the Recycler, dude. I've always loved the Recycler. I use it in box fights when I play with some with like my friends and we're having like our own box fight map and we can use whatever weapons we want. I actually legitimately loved the Recycler. But, but uh, it, it got better over the season. Although this season was the first to bolt the original pistol, so that's pretty notable. There was also, of course, crafting. Now this was quite the controversial system, and honestly it did take some time to adjust to for me. It definitely got improved when it became more of a side grade in season 7 and 8, Agreed. but I think the hate was still overblown. It was a neat mechanic that added a layer of depth to the game for a single season, but I do think that perhaps a battle royale game does not necessarily benefit from this level of complexity in its mechanics and weapon finding. That's well said. It was it was overcomplicated. Like the nuts and bolts, like as mentioned here, were way better. But another thing that really sucked about it is that it was necessary to craft. If you didn't find these weapons, you needed to craft something, and it was so much work to craft. Like you needed four of each piece, and I don't, and sometimes something else. Shockwaves. By the time you got your weapons, the game was halfway done. But again, that's why I liked the bunker chests. They were located in populated areas like Pleasant Park, but also across the map in random spots, and they meant that you didn't need to craft to get good loot. Regular chests could also just drop regular weapons, albeit at a lower drop rate. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking to myself. <laughs> albeit at a lower drop rate. This season introduced wildlife, another pretty controversial change. Honestly, I always liked the chickens and frogs. I thought Agreed. I never really understood the hate besides... 
the Raptors. I understood that hate, although I did really, really like the Raptors. I thought they were a really fun addition to the game. If they come in in third party, that's hilarious to me. So, but I don't understand the big hate for who who cares if frogs are in the game or if they aren't chickens, boars, you know, what, what could hurt having them in the game? That's what I never understood. I thought they were cute, charming, and being able to carry the chicken Zelda style was a cool reference. They just livened up the world a lot. Agreed. Now, don't get me wrong, the wolves and the boar could get pretty annoying at times, but they were also a pretty reliable source of heals. Don't get me started on raptors, though. <laughs> they can stay gone for good. The map changes in Primal are also pretty universally hated, but I'm about to say something controversial. I loved the Primal biome. J just Ooh. hear me out. The autumnal forests are really pretty and add a much needed splash of colour to the chapter 2 map. The guardian towers were pretty awesome Zelda Breath of the Wild reference. This, I kind of agree with. The vibe. The biome was pretty, but it's the main POIs besides the spire that changed that were really underwhelming. Like, Bony Burbs, like, that wasn't a great POI. Yeah, it looked okay, but still, compared to all the other map changes that we've gotten throughout Fortnite's history, they sucked. I will say, though, the spire, I loved. The Spire is one of the best POIs ever. Top 20 POI for sure. ...and great looting spots. The primal village assets consisted of some really cool tiles, and all of these POIs, especially colossal crops, were fantastic for harvesting wood. Although <laughs> admittedly pretty weak for brick, and especially metal in parts. I know that Bony Burbs is a super controversial POI, and I'm not going to pretend that I loved it, but it was definitely a guilty pleasure drop spot for me. It was a really interesting take on Tilted Towers that almost felt like an anti-Neo Tilted in a way. I can't exactly get behind that one. Like, I totally respect everybody's opinion, right? Everybody likes different POIs, but compare this to any other update we've ever gotten. It, it sucks. And it was always really highly populated. I'm gonna say it. Primal's Battle Pass was one of the best we've ever had. Agent Jones, with all of his styles, is easily one of the best tier 1 skins we've ever had. Absolutely. And I love that we got every style from his collab kidnapping ventures in Season 5. Plus a bonus. Tomb Raider's Lara Croft is a fantastic collab skin, and the PS1 style is especially <laughs> cool. Yeah. Tirana is not one of my favourite skins, admittedly, but she fits the season really well. Raz is a great legendary outfit, and his runic cube style was great foreshadowing for the last reality invasion in season seven it that was amazing the storyline that they did with raz that was very very interesting and i really liked how like you said that it, it teased last reality gave us something to talk about something was coming right we had something to talk about with that plug is a pretty funny meme skin works well for easter and for the introduction of chickens but always made me hungry for kfc rebirth <laughs> raven sure okay i don't really care for dc collab skins but Teen Titans! But Teen Titans! I was so hyped to see Raven! But her set had some really cool items, like the Portal Back Bling and Glide. True. And Spire Assassin was a pretty solid tier 100. Not the best tier 100, but I really like the it. last original tier 100 for a couple of years, so that's gotta be worth something, right? And the rest of the pass was jam-packed full of some great music packs, lobby screens, contrails, and more. I absolutely loved it from day one of the season. I'll pause it there because I don't want him to skip there. Tier 87 loading screen that's on there right now. One of the most beautiful pieces of art Fortnite's ever come out with. Season, And I still think it's a fantastic pass to this day. Agreed. Now, the secret skin? It was Neymar Jr. Probably the worst secret skin we've ever had. <laughs> Truly a terrible choice that I will not even try to defend as I didn't like it then and I don't like it now. In my opinion, an IO guard, the foundation, or even Jones himself would have been a far better pick. We did get a soccer ball toy out of it though. They don't really do toys much anymore, so that's pretty cool. But still, overall, a really good battle pass. This season had some pretty great updates in my opinion. 16.10 was relatively small and brought the addition of everyone's favorite animal, the raptor. Yeah! Oh, next week also added the recycler. Still one of my favorite weapons ever. It was so funny, especially the Nick 30 memes too. Like, uh, that, that was a whole thing in itself, but I mean, I, and you know what? I've never noticed there were teeth on the recycler. <laughs> That's actually a really nice touch, I've never noticed that before. As well as the new What's New in Fortnite video format on the official socials. A great bit of communication that sadly only lasted a couple of seasons. I really missed that, that was pretty unanimously loved by the community, was it not? Then there was the Spring Breakout event. Pretty nifty Easter event with the introduction of Bouncy Eggs and the return of the Egg Launcher. 16.20 brought the fan favourite Chonker Ties to make cars go off-road. A hotfix the next week brought the exotic Grappler Bow, which does pretty much what you'd expect. I enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty cool. 16.30 unlocked the Neymar Jr. skin and brought the new exotic Unstable Bow. Oh, one of my favourite weapons of all time was actually the Unstable Bow. The fact that you could use all of the bows and all of their gimmicks within one weapon. 
that was literally one of my favorite weapons of all time. And I think I forgot to put that in my favorite weapons section video. Really cool bow that changed what its function was every time it was fired. This update also saw the Raz boss take over the Spire. I remember using a harpoon gun and a zipline to cheese killing him because his health draining attack made him super hard to kill. <laughs> yeah. The 16.30 hotfix a week later unfolded the tactical shotgun and the infantry rifle, both very good additions to the loot pool in my opinion. 16.40 saw Aurelia take over a new island on the south coast, with players paying tribute to her or stealing the gold scar to unlock an extra star for Lara Croft. I loved that, by the way. Aurelia was very, very dangerous down there too, had her own little POI tied into Oro. I loved it. This also brought the new exotic Marksman 6 shooter, which was... Well, it was a gun. <laughs> Impossible Escape was a fantastic LTM that was super fun, had really cool free rewards, yeah. and I loved playing. I to be honest, I forgot about that. There was a lot of really good stuff in that season, eh? I wish it came back because I seriously think it's one of the best and most unique limited time modes they've ever done. That's 16.50 sure. unvaulted the dual pistols. The dual oh, pistols yeah. automatically make any season certified awesome. Dude, it, I, I swear to God, uh, I don't mean to be, again, I don't want to be disrespectful when I'm saying this. Jakus or Jackus, I don't know how it's pronounced. Probably Jakus. I've never watched any of his videos. I, dude, this guy got a new sub out of me 110% because this guy's opinions have been pretty much nothing but correct so far. Sorry, I don't make the rules. I haven't even mentioned the Wild Weeks yet. Wild Weeks were a brand new feature in Primal that saw limited time gameplay changes that kept the loop pool fresh and interesting every single week. That and the Fire Wild Week was so much fun when Fire did extra damage or whatever that was. Oh my god, I loved it. Fighting Fire with Fire Week had a variety of fiery unvolts and made oh, that's Fire what it was. more dangerous. Yeah. The Fiesta brought back some rare fish and buffed fishing spots. Bouncing oh. off the walls week made zooming around the map easier than ever, and Bargain Bin week halved all vendor sales, making it easier than ever to get exotic. Wild Weeks were just such a cool concept, and they kept coming back every season, right? It, I loved the fact that they took a nice, beautiful spin on the gameplay every single week. Through the end of Chapter 3, that's how cool they were. Now, to be fair, there was also some pretty strange content ideas this season, like Red vs. Blue Weekend, and that time they put Wake Rider in the shop instead of Star Wars stuff on May 4th, <laughs> but in my opinion, the content flow was absolutely fantastic this season, with new additions pretty much every single week. The story was also really exciting during Primal. The season starts off with the insane Zero Crisis finale event, which to date is still my favorite live event. F it's definitely up there, and oh my god, if he plays the music, the music was just phenomenal in this event, and it really, really mattered for the storyline. Following an incredible cinematic with Jones racing through the battlefield, we meet the Foundation for the first time and team up with him and Jones to fix the zero point by closing pure portals and creating a spire of stone. The reality waves were a really cool and immersive way of introducing new season content like the Primal Biome and the Chickens in real game time. Not to mention the music score. Phil Boucher did an amazing job on this one, oh and it's God. not at all surprising that we got not one, but two lobby tracks out of it. <laughs> then throughout the season, we follow a mysterious storyline of following the Crystal Song, investigating the Spire, and Raz being manipulated by Crystal Shards and inevitably attracting the last reality. But you can't also forget all of the speculation that came from this with the Foundation sealing himself inside the ball and what happened with Agent Jones. Like, there was... So much storyline to talk about that season. The build up to season 7 with the crushed IO helicopter, Dr. Sloan's menacing tapes, Mari's hot sauces show, and the crop circles will forever be one of the most exciting season build ups for me. That, and don't forget, we had the alien abductions. That was so hyped the first time that it happened. I was in game before I even knew that it happened. And my friend, she started getting captured. And she's like, what's going on? And she just tried starting to explain it. Where it's like, oh my god, there was this big green thing. And then we were laughing at her like, what the hell are you talking about? And then it ended up being there were actual UFO abductions. That was one of the best, as he said, one of the best season buildups. I'll go as far as to say the best season buildup of all time. That whole 2021 era of Fortnite just had a fantastic storyline, and Primal fits snugly right into that. So, that's Fortnite's Primal. Was it a perfect season? Of course not. It had some clear flaws, but the I do music. think the hate for it is a bit overblown. People act like the season personally flew out and eliminated their family in front of them. <laughs> That's so true, dude. That is so true. It's totally fine. I totally respect the idea of people not liking certain seasons. That's fine. Everybody likes different things, right? But people overblow that so much. People are like, 
Oh my god, I, I'm i quitting the game forever since Primal. I'll, every once in a while, I'll come in, somebody will come into my stream and be like, Hey, Glenn, what's going on? Yeah, I still haven't played Fortnite since Primal. Like, that happens, dude. That that legitimately happens. But, I, but, I mean, it's good to see those people. Don't get me wrong. But it's crazy to me how you can quit a game forever because of this. It's, I don't know, people blow this stuff out of proportion. When in reality, the meta was just kind of not great for the first few weeks. I would argue that the spray metas of Chapter 3 Seasons 1 through 3 were significantly worse, and I'd have the Primal Shotgun back any day over the Striker Burst Rifle or Combat SMG. <laughs> I honestly had more fun playing Primal than I did Vibin, Paradise, Mega, and Last Resort, amongst Ooh. others. Don't sh Ooh, okay. Ah, uh, I might agree with that. I might agree with that besides maybe Mega. No, not Mega. Mega was better. But, oh, that's a hot take. That's a hot take people aren't ready for. Shoot me. That's just my opinion. Mmm, okay. Maybe that was <laughs> a little far. Wow, that was actually a really, really good video. It's really nice to see some primal love because, honestly, I really, really enjoyed that season. A friend of mine, actually, Gray, if you guys watch the channel, it's his favorite season of Fortnite ever. The bows were fantastic. You know what I find interesting is people always, and this is something we talked about with Chapter 3 Season 1 during the video, people always remember... Fortnite seasons for the good things and then forget the bad. But when it comes to Primal, people always remember the bad and then just completely ignore the good. Like, there were really good updates. The storyline's fantastic. We had a great event. The battle pass was fantastic. The quests were nice. We had amazing buildup. And the loop pool was really fun at, at times. It depends what you were looking for, right? After the updates, the wild weeks, they kind of, Epic Games really worked to fix a lot of things. And people forget that. They just focus on when the season launched, how it was a little bit underwhelming, people didn't like the POIs, and people didn't understand the crafting, so many people, instead of understanding the crafting, they ended up quitting the game or getting mad and decided to never craft, and because they never crafted, they were always stuck with the makeshift weapons, and they always died because of it, and then there you go, I quit Fortnite. It's just a little bit interesting to me, because, and again, everybody's totally, totally fine to hate, hate their own season, right? I always respect people's opinions, we all like different things, right? But this season was absolutely 100% overhated. I love Chapter 2, I love the entirety of Chapter 2, and Fortnite Primal is right in there with me. I loved Fortnite Chapter 2 Primal. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please go subscribe to Jacus Creates. That was a really fantastic video, and I will absolutely be watching more of his content. This is the first time I've ever seen one of his videos, and I loved it. I loved it. Very level head, had very great opinions. The video is doing very well. At the time of recording this video, it was uploaded one day ago, and it has 25,000 views. So go give support it. Give it another view. Give it, give it another like. I thought it was a great video, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video on the screen right now. If you'd like to continue watching the channel, there'll be two videos or three videos on screen. One might be covering my face, so I'll try to get out of the way there for you. <laughs> check out any one of the videos. But in the pinned comment description down below, you'll find Jacob's Creates. Go check out his channel as well. I will see you anytime you come back, guys. Take care.